All right, so hello everyone. I'm Arcadia. I'll just introduce myself. Uh, I play Advanced Medic. Um, I'm gonna be talking about Sunshine today. Uh, so in my normal map reviews, I usually try to be a bit more practical, pragmatic. But in this one, I'm just gonna stick to the the details. I'm gonna try to give every piece of information I have to give. So. Uh, hopefully that is enjoyable. I recommend you take some notes, and uh, yeah, this will all be recorded so you can watch later. Alright, so first of all is the mid-fight. So this, along with process, is one of the two rotational mids currently in the pool. So what makes a rotational mid inter interesting is there is four different combinations of how the mid can play out. So each team has two choices. They can go right or go left. I suppose you can also go across, but it's not so straightforward on this map like process. Uh, that aside, uh, with each team being able to choose from two options, you have four total options. So that is going to be the basis for how we tackle this, how we break this down. So you have two different meat mids, quote unquote, and two different wrap mids. So a meet mid would be like if blue team goes right, they'll end up over here, and red team goes left, they'll also end up over here, so they'll meet. And vice versa, you can do that on the other side, or then the opposite would be if blue team goes right and red team also goes right, they'll be on opposite sides, that's a wrap mid. So let's start with meet mids. Meet mids, you should... The most important thing that you need to know with a meet mid is that whenever you're crossing, you want to take this high ground and any high ground adjacent to where you're going to cross. So this applies to the mid in general, not just meet mids, but it becomes especially important when you're playing right or left and meeting because your natural meeting point is going to be at a choke point right here and right here above which there are high grounds that a soldier can control and dominate the fight the team who has the soldiers on high grounds in these fights is going to be the team that wins them so you should attempt to take these high ground objectives as you're controlling these areas so what does this look like in practice so say red team or blue team goes right red team goes left they're meeting so you want to get as blue team you want to get your demo right here your soldiers here here or here and have a scout and medic nearby and you can have your flank scout play like cafe or on this thing and you want to essentially dominate this whole area and shoot down at them so you have high ground you can shoot down at them on the grass here so that's what a, a winning meet mid looks like when you go right. Is you have high ground and you punish them for being on the low ground. Vice versa, so when you go left, you want to get up above the high ground so that you're on here not getting shot down at. And you want to take control of these high grounds so that you can shoot down at them in this area. How to do this becomes much more complicated. You'll run into a lot of problems with this as you climb the divisions, and the expectation is going to be higher and higher for each div. So what works in a lower div, for example, just counterbombing the soldier and winning the 1v1, will not always win at the higher divs. You have to be more creative with how you spam this, how you deal damage to this player, and how you take control of it what they can do about you. Um, there's a lot I could go into, but I think I'll save that for the future. So next I'm going to talk about the wrap mids. So for example, let's continue to talk about if you go right, they also go right. You see them across here. I recommend walking across and having your soldiers bomb the tower and bomb into them. So you can jump from quite a long ways away so like if I were to just jump from here you can get all the way around to this side of the tower from all the way over there so I'd be looking for doing stuff like that 
uh, where you can jump, take high ground from quite a ways away, and you're counterbombing someone. So if there's a soldier here, you want to get on top of him as your team is walking across. And then vice versa, uh, if you're left and they're also their left but on your right, so you'll meet them across, I would recommend also trying to fight them straight up here. Um, so the same, the same principles apply here, where you want to be taking high ground when they're crossing the threshold and like into the rest of the fight. Because if you keep control of these high grounds, you're going to win the fight. So why do I suggest this versus wrapping fully is a question you might have. So what that looks like is you're going to go all the way past and usually you end up taking this high ground as you walk across. Um, the reason I don't recommend these as good options for starting out is that they're a little bit more nebulous, less vague and, or sorry, more vague in terms of you don't have a concrete objective that you're trying to take um, when you're just circling. So it can be easy to lose players, like lose focus of what you guys are doing and get caught out. However, I'll still talk about it. So the idea of a wrap mid, generally on process as well, you're looking to take an advantageous fight as a group. So think of like two six player blobs rotating around the point. If one of their players gets separated, you want to use your big blob to basically kill that player, pick him off. Or vice versa, if they, they split in two, for example, you can pick your fight and you can take like a 6v3 or 6v4 um, and that's going to also be winning. But where you do that becomes a little bit more complicated because there's a couple of different high ground positions and whatnot. So I would recommend that you look to take a fight when they're crossing a threshold, like this choke point, and you can take the high ground. No matter what point you're at, you can usually st either stop or go a little bit faster and catch up to them. Just do that. Hopefully what I'm saying is uh, making sense, but I'll try to be a little bit more illustrative. So uh, if you're blue, you're going left, the other team is circling, you keep going around, and say they get a little bit too slow and you decide to collapse right here that they're a, they're all standing like right here and you guys decide to bomb them take this high ground shoot down at them your demo lays into them that's how you're going to win a rap mid broadly speaking so the key points of what i kind of went over in this mid is the high grounds so you're going to want to pay attention to these as soldiers. Make sure that you're in the in, in a position to actively shoot down at players using your high ground. Um, and avoid taking damage from standing on a high ground when you don't need to. Um, the final thing I want to touch on here is going behind the Tetris. So a lot of people talk about this corner being very bad on this mid. And the reason is it's surrounded by multiple very strong high grounds. This one in particular, the awning. And uh, there's a lot of walls that can be splashed on. So it's really easy to do a lot of splash damage in this corner. So the most common question I get about this mid with the Tetris, how to punish this sort of mistake. Um, I'll answer your question in a second slice. Um, so the best way to punish this mistake, say like the most common situation would be you guys go right, they roll out valley, come left, and they go behind Tetris, something like this. What you want to do is to get both soldiers ready to go and then go at the same time and take these high grounds. Usually that looks like one on Tetris, one on the awning, or like one on uh, the bell tower and one on the awning. The bell tower doesn't have quite as good angles, but they're still all right. Um, the awning is kind of the key position, so you really want to have these two classes and the demo all in conjunction collapsing at the same moment. That's usually when there's too much pressure for them to be able to deal with. The thing that teams tend to mess up with this is 
having only one player up on a high ground at a time and not supporting them. Usually that can lead to pickoffs, so that's that's usually how teams fumble. Um, yeah, that's all the points I want to go over on mid, so let me answer Slicer Oak's question. Who should be calling... Who should call this is happening? I know it's probably situational, but what's a good rule of thumb of who should have the most vision for collapsing on a rotation? That's a good question. I think it is definitely situational in that you can have a lot of different players who are calling. So each team obviously has different players who prefer to call different things. But I generally recommend the demo be the person calling the collapses or the pocket scout for sake of simplicity. They generally have the most vision and awareness of a collapse. Um, but also a soldier can be really instrumental in seeing things. So like a soldier positioned up here can obviously see much more than a scout who's over here or right here. So... Trying to strike a balance is probably your best option for this answer, but um, I think usually as a demo, you're the one doing the damage. So if you start to do damage, you can call a collapse. Um, but I'd say any, any of those players can realistically be the ones calling it. It just kind of depends situationally what's happening. If the demo is doing damage, he should call the collapse. If a soldier is in a position to do a good bomb, they should call the collapse. And if the scout sees something he can aggress off of, he should call the collapse. Yeah, exactly. So Slice said, so is it a soldier's job to just stay healthy and loaded for an eventual collapse call? Yes, precisely. Especially if they're crossing the opposite threshold of you. Say you're doing a wrap mid like this and they're wrapping around. Uh, you just kind of want to stay on the sidelines, not take damage, and be prepared with the resources to collapse. Awesome. Okay, so I am ready to take any questions if anyone has any from Discord. Oh, actually I don't have any water. <laughs> okay. Uh, if nobody has any questions, I'll keep moving forward. So, next up is going to be all of the holds and pushes. I'm going to start from last. So, on your last, some of the key points I want to talk about. So, I'm going to go in terms of, or start with this ad, and then even, and then add, and we'll talk about all of them. So, on this ad, the thing that I recommend most um, is to make sure your scouts have off classes. But the best ones, in my opinion, are going to be having a sniper playing this right spawn. Let's see if I can get the... This lineup ends up being really, really powerful. This is a really great sight line. So you can see like quite deep into lobby, and it cuts off pretty much their whole their whole right side. Or I guess it's their left. You're right. But the sniper on right is very powerful, along with a soldier playing passively. You can play like quite a ways back. You don't necessarily need to play right up close, but playing this door passive and spamming, trying to get a force if they try to come in this way. You can also watch uh, both doors from right here, but it can somewhat impede your sniper's sightline if he's peeking from here. Uh, and then with the combo, I just recommend getting your demo set up top left. Usually uh, your pocket scout is going to be engineer. Uh, the best gun spots, the first and foremost is this one, because it's not really spammable from anywhere on the right. It denies this door really hard. It's hard for them to spam it in reverse, and it also sees point. It's a very powerful gun. Uh, other common spots are going to be here, here, or right here, and right here. Also on top of this, and sometimes you'll see other funny guns. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, demo top left, usually you have a soldier who's going to stand around here who can look to play over there, 
Uh, same with this roamer. You can either back up uh, or look to jump height. Yeah, the other corner is a good gun spot as well. Uh, but usually it's a little bit less adv advantageous because you already kind of plan to give up this side. So I'll talk about this all in a sec. Um, okay, sorry, let me get refocused. So as I was saying, the, the soldiers can look to kite around the point. You have a lot of high grounds and good space to move around. And then as medic and demo, you'll normally be set up over here and you can look to kite behind point if they come in top left or if they come in lower right, you kite up onto the platform. And this is a great high ground for you. So what I want to talk about is a lot of teams will, in disad and even situations, so this is going to be a nice segue in, um, a lot of teams will just pop this Uber in left and they'll stand over here and they won't really get anything and they'll stand over here. How you beat this sort of thing is like this high ground is higher than that high ground. So if you're able to play up here, you'll eventually win this war of attrition. So to go with what I was saying before, having a gun right here and not allowing it to be spammed from the right side can be very advantageous because it ends up being difficult to deal with in a post uber situation. So having <clears throat> two unubered teams on opposite sides of the point, if this team wishes to attack, they have to go down onto the low ground. And as a result, this team can shoot down at them and fight across the point very easily from their high ground. So you want to get into this situation more often than not because it's much easier for you to defend than it is for them to attack. And so like having a gun here doesn't really help you with this goal uh, in terms of like a disad or even situation as much. I mean, all gun spots are relatively viable. It's a sentry gun, so it's good on its own, but that's kind of the thinking behind this gun versus any other. Excuse me. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is even. So as I was saying before about this, uh, this right side area is patience is key. Being willing to give this side up, allowing them to walk in and not taking too much damage or losing your life is really important as a soldier. So you really want to be wary of dying over here. Dying on the right like usually spells disaster for your team. So having that sniper on the right is very good. Uh, it's a great sight line pretty much across the board. The only other off class I would recommend would be a heavy. Um, playing on top of, show you exactly what I mean. Playing on top of this barrel can be a really good angle. It allows you to play both like on the left and on the right uh, with some cover and allows you to maneuver a lot because you can jump and strafe around, stuff like that. It just ends up being a useful spot tool for the heavy. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't recommend a pyro. It's a pretty big last point, so pyro is not usually so useful. And uh, spy is spy. So yeah, as I was saying before, same thing. The biggest principle you can utilize in this fight is like if they take an exchange uh, on point, you're able to meet them, but you should also try to prioritize this high ground in the post fight. This allows you to spam really, really easily. So like if I were a soldier in this fight, I would make sure, and I'm not being Ubered, like I would either be up there or holding this door and looking for when the Uber is over because you don't really want their team to get in from here and you want to be able to control this area so you can spam them when they try to cap. Hopefully this is a good introduction to kind of the ideas of how to play this last, but by no means is this the only way to play it. Um, next I'm going to talk about ad pushes. So your 
gonna want to do a, a couple of things. So there's only a couple of different pushes out of this last. There's three doors, I guess three and a half if you count these. These sh are basically the same door. Um, it's pretty hard to get out of Shutter and Bats because of Demo and Soldier. So they can very easily have a Demo set up right here and a Soldier set up right here and they're able to keep you inside of Bats. So it's difficult especially at the higher level, but at the lower levels, I would expect that pushing Shutter and Bats is going to be uh, relatively straightforward. So what you're going to want to do is you kind of have two different pushes. One is going to be through Shutter and Bats, which is kind of one entire push with uh, your flank watching lower left. I guess you also have to clear dungeon. Usually that's a roamer's job. Um, but in terms of actually getting through, normally you're going to peek the shutter with a combo, try to get the stickies, or get the demo to get his stickies so that you can get through, and you're going to try to help your guys get out bats, and then ultimately you want to make your way up to platform and spam them out here. So they're, they'll normally be leaving cafe, so you kind of want to get into this position as your objective. So shutter and bats ends up being quite difficult, as I said. So the two pushes that are also viable are going to be walking out with a scout and a demo and walking into them like this. This can be a little bit technically challenging to get everyone to push through the doors at all the same times, but this is what a lot of teams will do. And then if they're caught, they'll use, but if not, they'll circle back, take the point, force them out. Uh, the other thing that you can do is bomb your demo from here. You can bomb him pretty much directly into a cafe. If you hug this right wall, it's actually quite difficult for them to see you. Assuming they're not playing right here is pretty much the only spot that gives you vision. If you're playing like in this corner or you're like right here, you're pretty much entirely obscured from this door. So a demo can come flying in. So that's what I would recommend is using on a demo through this point and uh, trying to catch them in val or in a cafe. The one precautionary tale uh, I want to tell is the two important spots to be aware of are going to be like this whole valley area, so on top of this in valley, and also there's a wall bug spot right here. Uh, you can get on top of the that little ledge and this can spell trouble for some pushes uh, if soldiers in your division tend to hide in wall bug spots. Um, as a flank, I would be really cognizant about getting up onto this spot really quickly. So especially Rummer, I would just make this your job. Usually, uh, sorry, I said earlier that Rummer clears dungeon. That was a uh, me misspeaking. I meant Pocket. Pocket is normally gonna clear dungeon area and Rummer is normally gonna be in this left area. And usually you want to come out this door and play right here. This gives you a good angle to spam valley, spam choke, and once your team gets in, you're preventing back caps from happening through these doors. So, this last is relatively complicated to push out of, so if you're thinking like, gosh, these pushes sound kind of difficult, like, the answer is yes, they, they are difficult. Um, Yeah, that's uh, that's all the points I had to talk about for last. Does anyone have any questions about last? Uh, can you comment on the um, the forward hold on last, where the medic is um, sort of behind point? Yeah. So there's okay. I'm gonna need to remember. So I believe the medic plays here, supporting two soldiers on this side, um, I guess it would be right if you're facing this way, with a demo solo holding left, uh, and then usually you have a gun supporting the medic somewhere like here or here. Um, I think it's alright, but a little bit needlessly complex. Uh, I think the way that this is done is uh, it has some kind of obvious downsides in that, like, 
you really don't have a way to deal with the dungeon pressure. So if they like, obviously if you have two soldiers here, it can be really easy to spam, right? But what I was talking about before about how uh, like you, you kind of are happy to give this up, like it's okay to, ends up being more important in my opinion because this dungeon the way that uh, like soldiers can get in from here, like this, is very threatening, I think. Uh, and then this gun here, honestly, like can be difficult to deal with if you're setting up like this, but... I don't know, I think there's pros and cons to both sides, but... I think you could do it, it's just a bit more complicated. Does that answer your question? <laughs> Yeah, I just I just saw this somewhere, but I've never seen anybody actually play it, so I was just kind of curious. Yeah, I'm not so familiar with what every team does, but I'd say that the one that I laid out is simple and effective, but there are certainly alternatives and other ways to play this point. All right. I'm going to keep on moving if no one else has any more questions. So on second, when you're disad, you're going to want to have your combo play out all the way. So normally you have your medic all the way back here. You're going to have a pocket scout watching. Usually flank scout is going to play like just the valley area and be ready to leave bottom left. Rummer is going to play up here. Classic spot, watch valley. Uh, be able to spam from far away, be able to drop down and jump out. Pretty straightforward. Uh, usually as demo, you're going to play back here as well. You can watch a lot of different traps from back here. Sometimes you might want to play shutter to watch or on platform uh, if you're watching a trap all along here, which I'll go through. Um, and then as pocket soldier, uh, usually you can just play back here, you can spam this cafe door, and you have a very easy exit route through dungeon. Yeah. So... The thing that you usually fear most in Dissed is going to be a valley bomb. So just having this scout be aware that this could come, and as a medic being all the way out, playing beam length on this guy, is important. So, next up is even. So the normal spots are kind of what I went through. Uh, you're usually going to have your demo right here. So on the flank it's going to be the same, roamer up in the roamer spot on the fence. Uh, scout is going to be just vaguely watching on this wood area. Uh, demo is usually going to be right here with some kind of trap in cafe, choke. And then as pocket you're usually going to watch cafe close and play over here. As pocket scout, usually play right here, watch for bombs through choke. And as medic, I tend to play beam length back here. The only thing you really need to be aware of is if they do a valley pressure with their medic, you should rotate your demo and medic across the point. And you can spam across and support your flank players with heals. Usually as pocket scout you can rotate as well. Um, the only other thing you have to be wary of, especially as pocket scout, but also medic, is a bomb can come from off of this wall that's pretty good. So I guess there's a lot of ways that this can happen, but basically you just care about a bomb coming from behind the bell tower as well, or the lighthouse, I should say. Uh, this is an option as a threat that they can send, so you have to be aware that you don't... Uh, valley, or sorry, choke is not the only place threats can come from. Alright, so let me... Okay, yeah. Uh, next is going to be add, so pushing into mid. So there's two doors that you take for free. That's going to be choke and cafe. 
and one where you use through, and that's going to be Valley. Valley is your use through door. So let's start with Valley. Uh, you're usually going to try to stay unspotted, but there'll usually be a player right here spotting you guys. So a lot of this hinges on speed of not getting spotted, so usually you're going to hug left, then be ready to bomb right away as soon as this guy sees you. You're usually going to want to bomb your demo towards cafe or choke and try to catch them. They'll usually be playing, I'd say, around right here. So you have a decent shot at catching them just in the most general sense, but I would say this is a weak option if you do it a lot. I would not recommend bombing all the time. So choke and cafe. Let me start with cafe first. So cafe is going to be a take for free door. Your biggest threat here is going to be a soldier above. So you're going to want your pocket soldier to walk out left and jump above, clear the sky. Then as a combo, uh, you can have your pocket scout get out onto this Tetris and you have great vision across the whole mid. This allows you to spot any bombs or see any threats. Uh, as medic, you can play right here and support this guy. You're able to swing right or left. And then as demo, you should also be walking through. Usually, uh, I would swing left and start trying to lock out a choke point, whether that's cafe or choke or valley. Then as flank, it's best to clear the same door at the same time, so I'd recommend both going valley and like sometimes this can lead to problems with choke getting pushed, but it's much better than the alternative where you lose a flank member due to a 2v1. Um, yeah, that's my recommendation. So then a choke push would look very similar to a cafe push because you have the same issue. You want to clear soldier on top of here then generally you just want to take this point for free from here so you're looking to get in across some places you need to worry about for hiders could be below this under point behind the tetris uh, or on top of the awnings but you're basically just looking to walk across point force them out and then lock the chokes down pretty straightforward um, you can get pretty much all your players in from every door but I would normally look to have my, if I were going choke, have my pocket go through cafe, have demo, scout, medic, go through choke, flank, go through valley. All right, so that was everything about second. Any questions about second? I'm going to keep on moving. So next is going to be mid. I talked about the hiding spots briefly, but there's a lot of places that you should be aware of that a soldier can hide. A soldier can hide here. Actually, this is very effective. The angles end up being quite good. If you're like pushing in, you really don't end up seeing this guy um, kind of from everywhere. So <laughs> how make med not die? Hard question. Um, okay, so continuing on. Next time I'm going to talk about disad. So there's three doors you can leave out of, and I think all of them are at least viable for leaving, but I would recommend leaving cafe. It's kind of the simplest for your team to pull off while providing good vision and being able to build. Uh, so usually that looks like medic playing here, scout on top of here, demo. I go over here watching a trap, maybe choke, flank can leave valley, pretty simple. I think leaving choke is the safest option for a medic. It allows you all the same options as leaving from cafe, because if you need, you can swing this way and go, go out that way, or you can also cut this way and go out uh, the lower area. Um, and then valley, similar. I guess, or the opposite, I should say. 
is it's a little bit more unsafe to leave this way because there's a lot of places that a soldier can just bomb and land and it's, it's relatively thin. It's easy to get splashed. But I think they're all relatively viable for leaving in terms of a combo. Next, I'm going to talk about even. So the normal positions for holding are... So first up, let me say, like, since this fence is see-through, you can always know when people are crossing over into cafe from choke. So this allows you to have both of your spam classes, your pocket and your demo, to play choke. One does not need to watch cafe because you can see it. So you can have your whole combo, soldier, scout, demo, medic, all in the choke area, and you can have your flank just playing on, on top of this ledge. You have great vision from all angles, and uh, you don't really have to push up close to do anything. Um, I'm going to talk about stacking. So you have a couple of different options for the basic bombs. So I showed one of them before was jumping from here or so, jumping off this. I could do it better, but that was basically what you're doing. Um, other options you have are going to be through choke. Uh, pretty straightforward, just doing this, you end up landing here. Then, I believe, if you don't bonk your head, you can also jump off this. This can be equally good, but you can come from cafe this time. Let me try to do it right. Nope, I couldn't. Yeah, there's a lip right here, you just have to not bonk your head on it. That's all. Um, yeah, those are the three most common spots to jump off of to sack in. Uh, there's a lot of different things that you can do. So one thing that I like to re recommend is going to be a pinch. So what you do is have your pocket or rumor, doesn't matter which. One of them is going to jump through choke like this. But you're going to swing around right and pinch here. So at the same time... You're having your combo walk in here, try to fight these flank players, the soldier up here, and you can pinch these guys, try to pick them off. And then you can take a, a 6v5 or 6v4 fight. Um, next is going to be a fake bomb. So this is where you have both of your soldiers, get them buffed at choke. First soldier through is going to do a fake bomb and leave cafe usually. And the other soldier is going to commit for real. Uh, those are just two very basic concepts, and you can do a lot of different interesting stuff with those two concepts, uh, pinching and faking. And yeah, that's how you can make sacking interesting. So next I'm going to talk about add, so full, or uh, like player number pushes or uber add pushes. So. You kind of have three options, once again, similar to pushing into mid. Um, you can take from cafe for free. Usually that looks like uh, swinging left with your combo, being aware that there can be traps on a lot of these things up here behind this thing uh, along here. There can be traps on this window that are a little bit difficult to see if you're really not looking for them. Uh, the big trap that is really important is this ledge, being careful of not getting too close to that. And then your objective when you're taking cafe for free is to just walk into them without getting forced. And eventually once you get to here, uh, they'll be forced out entirely and you can lock down these doors. Then as flank, while this is happening, you really don't want to commit uh, too soon because that can lead to some issues for you. You generally want to be pressuring, but not committing. You can fight these guys, but you don't want to... You don't want to die while your combo is doing that, because that can leave your team really vulnerable to a collapse. So then, that was the valley push. Or sorry, not valley. That was the cafe push. Next would be the choke push. You kind of have two options. The one which I recommend more is swinging wide left. This is how you take for free. Um, 
as I was talking about before, you can see when there's someone in cafe, so you don't necessarily need to have your soldier go through to clear it. Uh, this frees up your soldier to play on fence, which is really good. You can clear a lot of the traps I talked about uh, from up here, as well as you just have a great spam angle onto their bats and onto platform. So you'll get up here as pocket while your team locks around and takes for free. Um, the last is going to be a valley push. So let me switch to demo so I can show you exactly what I mean about these bombs. So in valley you have a couple different bombs. One I like to recommend is two stickies on this thing. Uh, they don't have great vision of this so you can be as a demo back here. Your medic and scout can be up here ready to use and then you just jump like this and you can land in a number of different places. You could land bats, you could stop and land up here. Uh, you don't have to commit, but you're looking to put down stickies or on shutter or on bats and cut them off from leaving. Uh, there's a couple different jumps you can do. That's not the only one. So you can also hug this right wall and get to right here and do a jump. Um, obviously this ends up with you have to be careful to not run into this thing, but otherwise uh, both of these are very common, so you're just going to bomb your demo trail with the scout. Um, then as a flank, I recommend you either go choke or trail from valley, and then you're looking to collapse around the same time, so you just want to lock the doors with your team and start the cap right away. So let me talk about all the trap spots real quick before I move on. So you have this corner, make sure to check this ledge. Um, as I was talking about this windowsill, this can be a good trap. Behind here is a good trap. Then you also have all of these sorts of places along the fence, along the slight pole. Uh, you can put sticks like right here. This is very good. I think you can put them like in the pole, but it's a little bit complicated or uh, finicky. And then you also have stairs traps that can be a little bit funny. Obviously you can see them, but it can be a bit difficult to deal with them if you don't have uh, they don't really splash that wall. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much all the traps you need to be wary of as a combo. Then Valley, you kind of have the same issue. There's a lot of different ledges, but I would just be aware that you can get debt from a lot of places. Um, yeah, let me see what Slice said. So if you do a CTAP from Choke, you can curve and land on the high ground above Valley. The extra rockets help you get out when you normally couldn't or secure a good pick on the valley rep bomb. Yeah, that's definitely correct. I'm sure there's more bombs that I could introduce, certainly. Uh, yeah, landing on this high ground is always going to be good. This is a great soldier spot. So, any questions in Discord about um, the midpoint in general? Um, I have one. So, when we're pushing from Valley onto 2 and you want the demo to bomb, just to clarify, is he's Ubered, right? Yes, 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 yes. So you're using in Valley, kind of far back, but you're chasing, yeah. Is it ever viable to double sack into second tier? Uh, I'd say it's a little bit difficult. Uh, there's a lot of doors that are relatively spread apart, so... I would say no, it's not that viable to do. Um, hopefully my answer makes sense for a while. So like if you sack to, for example, your whole flank, you send a soldier and a scout, then you have to have your demo watching choke and a soldier watching valley. Um, and usually your scout is supporting. So usually they can bust all three doors and there's really nothing you can do about it. If they go cafe, uh, you're going to have to rotate your whole team to kind of deal with this large door that they can just walk through, that you really can't stop them from 
going through, and if you rotate, that leaves valley open. And this is not so much of a problem on other lasts. Actually, even on this last, it's not as much of a problem because you can take an exchange and lock them out without letting them get through. But there's pretty much no way to stop them from getting through all three chokes at the same time. Yeah, does anyone else have any questions? Okay, sounds good. Let's continue on to second. So. On their second, the disad place to leave is going to always be cafe. You pretty much don't want to leave the other doors because it's easy for them to collapse onto you uh, from the lower right area. They can bomb and try to catch you in Choker Valley much more easily than cafe. You're quite a distance away. So the thing I would be aware of is make sure to watch this door with someone and make sure to watch the store's demo. You usually have a trap set up over there uh, and you're looking to leave cafe. Then as flank, always try to be a bit of a threat up here. So you can look to back cap if they don't clear this or like don't force you away. Uh, but if they do, you really want to just back up but still be a present threat to them that you could back cap or you could bust. Uh, it's a really powerful position. Yeah, so that's to said. Next is going to be even. So the best way to get into lobby is going to be through lower right. The reason is from right here, you can clear the shutter. You can clear all the traps. And from right here, you can clear above. Actually, no, from here as well. You can clear above this uh, what's it called? Bat store. So, what you really want to do uh, is all get in from low right, and then you can clear these doors and get everyone else in from the other doors. Um, so, next is gonna be. Well, okay, hold on. So. There's a couple things you can do on even first sex. So you have a couple of different ways to pinch and here's what you can do. So I would normally recommend pressuring from left, trying to put pressure on these guys and having your flank get in from a uh, dungeon. So usually that looks like pressuring from left with your combo and having your rummer jump in and try to fight these guys, so that would be a left pinch. And you can sack that guy, maybe it doesn't work out. Um, or you can do the same pressure top right and have the pinch come from lower again. Uh, you can simply jump from down there, jump off this wall and land anywhere in here. Along with a lot of pressure from the demo, it can be difficult for them to deal with. Uh, as with any last, make sure you spam the gun first, forgot to mention that. Then some other things you can do are sniper is really good for the same reason. This sight line is very strong. Once you can get in wide, it's it's just very good to see on this last. Even top right ends up being pretty easy to peek without them really being able to do anything about you. So I recommend running a sniper onto this last. It can be pretty good. Um, the classic bomb, let me switch to soldier so I can do it live. The classic bread and butter bomb that always works, always will work, is going to be from right here. You jump off this wall, you skip through, I can't do it live, I'm not going to try. But you skip through and you can land quite deep and there's not that much that they can do about it because you have so much momentum. Um, the thing that's good is if they have a gun right here, like this will stop you, but normally there's other guns like right here that just won't see you at all, that can see point. So you don't necessarily need to deal with a gun if it's uh, not gonna directly impede you, impede your bomb. Um, yeah, so that's it for even. Next I'm gonna talk about 
add pushes. So there are obviously three different doors that you can go through. So left and lower are going to be the free doors and top right is going to be the used door. So pretty much every time you go left, you're going to want to swing left, uh, get all the way in, make sure you're spamming a gun uh, before you go do this, obviously. Um, but what you really want to do is as demo, you trap off the point, you can have your scout get to the point, and then as medic, you tank your scout and have him start the cap. And if he's going to die, you use on him, and using on him becomes a collapse. So that would be an add situation, not an even situation. Then the other thing you can do for free is going to be lower. So I'd recommend just walking in, hugging right with scout, demo, and medic. As scout, you want to get to right here and start the cap. As demo, you want to start sticking off the point. And as medic, you want to tank this scout. Uh, and use on him if he's going to die. Usually as flank, you're waiting for the uber to be used to actually bust. Uh, this can be a little bit difficult because both of these ubers don't really help you get in top right at all, uh, and they can spam you hard. But you have the same options that I talked about when sacking. You can bomb through, uh, or you can trail the uber. Either are all right. Uh, last, I'm going to talk about the use uber from top right. Usually that just looks like putting a sticky right there, jumping in, trailing with the scout, using around this corner, by the way, and uh, trying to get the medic before he can get into spawn or kite behind. If you have a really hard time catching this guy, uh, you can try to run two projectile classes in the uber, but that will diminish the amount of time that you can actually spend with the uber. So I would recommend not doing that unless you have a lot of trouble with just a pure demo bomb with a scout trail. Uh, and then as flank, usually you want to trail this uber because this door is hard to get through and this space is really advantageous to play. So I'd recommend getting all in from up here or maybe you could have your rummer get in from lower and, and play up here. But generally, you're so unsupported on the left, it can be difficult to get through when they're all kiting over there. Alright, so that's pretty much it. Does anyone have any questions generally or about pushing into last from second? Um, when they're running sniper and they're trying to push, where should our heels be positioned? So... There's a couple of different ways to play. So the sight line that you care about from left is quite massive, but uh, if you play behind point, you're 100% safe from a sniper left. Um, from lower, you have to be a bit careful because uh, sometimes this guy can get quite deep. And if you're like playing playing here, you're like safe from the sniper on top right, but you can get peach from lower, so you have to be careful about that. So just playing back here is usually good, and then um, it's the same thing. You just have to make sure you're positioned well from top right. So basically that means like hugging this wall and moving a fair amount. So yeah, the answer is right here, but you have to be a little bit aware of where the angles actually are and how you deal with them. Does that answer your question? Yeah, gotcha. Cool. Duhaim in chat says, when does it make sense to bait the cap as Frank Scout? Um, baiting the cap as Flank Scout is a little more difficult on this point. So like on Gullywash, for example, a point where you bait on cap a lot is Flank Scout because you have water. Um... Uh, I'm not sure if I have another good example. Anyway, it can be best to do so the, the timing you're waiting for is during the uber. Anytime your team is using the uber to try to kill them, whether that's going to be a bomb from top right or after they use this uber to save the combo scout on point, that's when you want to get to the cap. That's kind of the most important piece and 
all of this is making sure that you're able to get onto the point right after the use, no matter what, where that use is made. But allow the Uber to be space for you to stand on the cap. All right. Um, nobody else has any questions. That's about all I have. So, yeah, just uh, thank you everyone for watching. Have a nice day.